Welcome back to another video. My name is Andy here at Mobile Must Have, and today I wanted to walk you through adding a Verizon card to your PepWave. So let's get started. So we are staying just outside of Bar Harbor, Maine, and it is stunningly gorgeous. We are about 15 miles from Acadia, and it's definitely something you need to add to your list if you haven't made it here already. Now, since we're here, we have had pretty good AT&T coverage um, all the way through, and that is what we're mainly using for our data plan. Uh, we're using the one that you can get at Mobile Must Have. Now, I wanted to add a backup data plan here. So, when I say backup, it's not a primary unlimited plan. This is going to be a 15 gigabytes. I've gotten somewhere where I have no coverage and I, with AT&T, and I need to add just something that can, kind of can carry me over until we get back into an AT&T coverage place. Honestly, this has happened to me one time while on the road. So this is not something um, I feel like we need to do a lot of and have a true unlimited Verizon plan for. AT&T has gotten us really well covered, but there are some times where Verizon is just going to be better suited and I wanna have 15 gigs uh, available to me when that happens. Now, I'm recording this video as of August 2020, and I say that because currently Verizon is offering for 20 bucks, if you add it to your existing line, um, a 15 gigabyte card. Now, once you go over 15 gigabytes, it throttles you to 128 kilobytes. It's horrible, like it's unusable once you're past that 15 gigs. It's not the networked managed plan that they had before. Um, but 15 gigs is good enough to get me through a weekend or through a couple days if for some reason um, there's something wrong with AT&T, like the tower's down or I have no coverage or something like that. So this is a backup plan for me. So the first step you need to do is obviously actually get a Verizon SIM card. Um, for me, it was easiest just to run to the local Verizon store in town and have them add that hotspot plan to my account. And when they did that, they gave me a SIM. Now, the guy there actually was trying to give me a micro SIM, and that's going to be a small one, one more for a phone or a jetpack. Um, and I had to make sure that he got me the full size SIM card. This is the standard size or something like that, but it's the full size one, and this will just punch out from this card. Second thing, once you have the SIM card, you have to have the IMEI of your device. Um, so to get the IMEI, there's two options. One is on the box that your pet wave came in, there's a white sticker and it will be located on that white sticker. It will say IMEI and that will be the number for your modem. Now, if you did a transit duo, that, again, that has two modems in it, you're going to have to pick which modem you give them. In most cases, as long as you give them a pep wave modem IMEI, it should work in any pep wave. So even if you feel like you need to switch modems, you're not sure, Give them one of them and it should work fine in the other. The second option is to log into the admin console of the PepWave. And when you're there, you can see the cellular option at the top in, in this case. When you click on details and you go to the fifth line down, you can find that particular modem's IMEI. So that will also get you the same information you need that way too. Now that we have our SIM card, the SIM card has been attached to our account and the account has our IMEI on it, we should be ready to put the card in the device. So let's go do that next. Okay, now in most cases you do not have to, uh, to unplug this or unscrew any of this. I did this really just to show you guys what we're gonna do here. Now I have the Transit Duo uh, but the process is going to be the same if you went with a PepWave uh, BR1 Mini uh, all the way up. Um, it's going to be more or less the same. The only difference you're going to see is mine on this side. Let me try to get the camera focus. So mine has, you can see, two rows of SIMs. So I can put two in this modem and two in the next modem. Uh, most of yours, if you don't have a Transit Duo, is just going to have two SIM slots total. Now, in most cases, your primary one is going to be in slot eight, your primary SIM card. You can see, you can see that here. I've got two already, so I've got one SIM card for each modem already, um, in primary in the A slots. So I'm going to take this new SIM card, this one, and put it in the second slot, the B slot. Uh, make sure when you punch these out, of course, you don't break anything. Ugh, cool. Um, now, 
Uh, okay, so here we go. So we've got the sim. And let's see. And we've got... There we go. We've got the two slots. Now, uh, we've already gone over this. If you have more questions about sims, I'm going to link a sim video up above. Uh, but basically, the metal part with the tag, the little part that's the tag, is going to go inside, and the metal part goes up. So we're going to go into cell modem 2. I'm going to put this in the second one. So I'm going to go into the second modem. This is modem 1. Sorry, the focus. Ah, focus! This is modem 1, this is modem 2, and then I've already got 1 in slot A. This is going to go into slot B. It's going to go with the metal part up and the tag going in, and you'll hear a click. You hear the click? There you go. So now we have three. We've got one primary, slot A, and then in my second modem, I've got my, really my plan B, and now my plan C for coverage in there. Cats, right? Cats are great. Now we have everything really connected the way we want to. We're going to plug all the antennas back up and we're going to put power back in. Should be pretty simple. Now that we have all of our hardware, our SIM card and our pep wave, everything's powered back up, everything is connected, we're going to go to the admin console of the pep wave. And this is where we can verify the card is working, the one that we put in, and uh, or see if it's not. And this is actually the first time I'm doing this. So I've known we'll be troubleshooting together. Okay, so now we've already logged into the admin console. Um, and you can see this is the dashboard. Now, I am going to have a couple things that a lot of you may or may not have. So don't freak out if this is a little different. Each type of device does have a bit different of a dashboard, and that's okay. Now, we have to remember where we put that new SIM. Um, our primary SIM is up here, and you can see that's connected. Uh, we have LTEA on AT&T, and that's great. Um, you're going to see I'm also attempting to connect to Wi-Fi as WAN, and it's jumping all over the place. It connects, it scans, and then it disconnects, and I've had the same issue with my 5 gigahertz network, and it's just, you know what, it's probably not even worth having on, so we'll just turn that off. Now, my cell 2, I, I have a another card here that is unlimited, and you can see, based on where I'm at, it's running 3G and roaming, and just has, well, although it has bars, it's, it's just not going to work for us here. And you can see the CPU on the bottom, it's thinking really hard. It's working on making all of those changes um, over. And you can even see, I am doing this in real time. We just restarted our router eight minutes ago. You saw that in the clip beforehand. Um, so I'm trying to do this with you guys in, in real time, so there's nothing behind the scenes we're doing here. We'll let this connect. Hopefully, it's going to show us pretty good service uh, with our with a Verizon line, and we'll see. Now, my phone on Verizon right now is getting two bars where we're at, maybe three if I'm outside. Um, so I'm curious to see with the pointing antenna up on the roof um, connected to Verizon, we'll see if it's any better. Okay, so it's resetting. This is all good signs. Okay, great. So we're obtaining an IP address. You can see we're connected to LTE. Ooh, it was on LTEA there for a second. That's a pretty good sign. Now, obtaining IP address for the first time we're connecting might take a minute. Oh, you can see it went to standby and we're connected. Awesome. So that worked out perfectly for us. Now, if you get stuck on obtaining IP address, that means one of two things. One is there's something wrong with your billing and you're probably going to have to contact Verizon and say, my device is seen that I have my SIM card. Um, so it's not a device issue. It's something wrong with billing. The second is it could be your IMEI wasn't punched in correctly, you didn't connect it up front, so you're going to have to go back to Verizon. That's what obtaining IP address means. There's something wrong with the billing aspect of that. Now, just for kicks and giggles, let's do a speed test. First, we're going to do AT&T, since that is what is connected, and we'll just pull up the speed test app, let it find its server, All right, and I'm going to change it to something more local. We're just going to do, we'll do the banger one. We'll make sure that's the same on both. Let's hit connect. 
Wow, so AT&T is smashingly fast here. Um, and this is a great connection right off of, and again, this is just the mobile must have AT&T plan uh, that you can get off the site. And um, yeah, and then the, the, the transit duo. So that's a Cat 12 modem. Now let's switch it. So we're gonna turn on cell two. We'll turn down cell one. Let that all reconfigure. Here, we'll do this in magic. And now let's do our speed test again. So I'm actually gonna close speed test and I'm gonna reopen it and that will just kind of reset everything for it. We'll watch it go to a Verizon provider and then we'll make sure we're using the same server. And we hit go. There. So Verizon is still a super solid connection. Obviously, it doesn't quite compete with AT&T speeds here, but 30 down and 22 up, that is more than enough for what we need to do our work. So I'm very happy with this as a backup plan so far. Now I'm going to do one other thing to this cell. I'm going to bring my AT&T plan back up so I'm not taking up too many gigs on my Verizon plan. I'm going to go into details here, and since this is a limited card, I'm going to go, I'm going to go down to the, let's see what section is it on, da, 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 da. okay, I'm going to go down to the cellular settings, I'm going to say um, both SIMs, because that's really what I want to do, and then I'm going to prefer SIM A, because that's really the SIM that's an unlimited SIM, so I want to keep that one. The SIM B is my backup. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to enable um, allowance bandwidth allowance monitoring. And then I'm going to go down to here and I'm going to type in 15. And you've got to go in and figure out when your monthly bill resets um, for this particular plan. Um, I honestly don't know what mine is, so I'm going to have to figure that out. I'm going to put it on the 10th for right now. And then we can hit save and apply. So that will allow that card to activate when um, for some reason SIM A in that modem doesn't connect, um, which it's not connecting now. Remember we had a WAN error, so that means it was having some issue where it couldn't connect at all and we were on 3G roaming. Um, so obviously the PEP wave is going to pick the Verizon card over that that other card here. And boom, we are uh, we are live with that card. All right, guys, as usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We are normally faster, though, if you would like to email us directly at support at mobilemusthave.com if you'd like a response there, too. All right, guys, and until the next video, we hope to see you on the road. See you later. Okay, so I wanted to do like a little extra clip here for anybody who is paying attention. I do have the speed fusion enabled. So what I'm curious about is speed fusion is being created here. See, it says creating tunnels. You saw the speeds of both connections on AT&T and Verizon, super solid, right? I'm turning on my Wi-Fi just to see if it'll connect, it's hopeful. But um, it, the speed fusion looks only at stuff in priority one, and I wanted to do a speed test with stuff just in priority one to see what is it when they're merged together. Now we know speed the speed fusion does not double the traffic, right? So I had 50 before and 30, it is not gonna create 80. It's not create, it's not doubling my speed limit. What it's doing is it's creating another lane. So everything is still going at the speed it was, but I now have double the bandwidth to put stuff through. Sometimes I can change speed tests, a lot of times it won't, but since they were both a little different, I wanted to just see what it would do. Now you can see my source is now Amazon since I'm using a Amazon VPN for the speed tunnel. Now let's hit go. I'm expecting it to be around 30 to 40, I don't know. See the ping test was a bit higher. And all right, so it's pulling mostly probably from AT&T. It's even better than it was before. So you see we are getting some speed gain. Uh, we're at 70. Wow, so it did actually do quite a bit of improvement there. And then the upload is still very solid too. So I bet you that'll settle around 20. Yeah, that's pretty close. 
That looks really, really nice. And of course, now we've duplicate packets across multiple things. And we've done a lot of, uh, there's a lot of background happening there to create that really solid speed test. And we can do one more. If we go to fast.com, which is quickly becoming a, a speed test I'm enjoying. This is gonna be focusing more on streaming. So it's not too much focused on the ping because it's gonna be for Netflix, right? So that's all one way traffic for the most part. Um, and the speeds are usually very different. Speed tests are kind of crazy. All right, so we do more info. Then we can see what our latency is. So latency is a little bit lower than what speed test on net was showing. And we'll see what the upload speeds get. Yeah, and see the upload speeds are super high compared. So super hard to tell. Uh, but either way, you can tell this is a very solid connection uh, with speed fusion. We're not really dropping any speed. We're probably gaining anything and having those two solid lines together. So the next video will be how fast do I go through these 15 gigs? <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time.